shark to chick. Choosing the big wave. Setting yourself an audacious goal. Open quote. All who have accomplished great things have had a great aim, have fixed their gaze on a goal which was high, one which sometimes seemed impossible. Close quote. Orison Sweet Marden. Audacious goal. An adjective. One. Extremely bold or daring, recklessly brave, fearless, e.g. an audacious explorer. Two. Original. Without restriction to prior ideas. Highly inventive, e.g. an audacious vision of the city's bright future. 3. Recklessly bold in defiance of convention, propriety, law or the like. Insolent, brazen. 4. Lively, unrestrained, uninhibited, e.g. an audacious interpretation of her role. The life-changing tactic of setting yourself audacious goals is consistently used by people who are successful in all walks of life. Refer back to the notes you made in task 1.1. Look closely at the people you identified as successful and you should notice that most of their accomplishments are a byproduct of the audacious goals they had set themselves. Sometimes these successes also mark momentous occasions in history. For example, Dr. Martin Luther King's famous speech at the Abraham Lincoln Memorial. This occurred because Dr. King himself set himself the audacious goal of ending racial injustice at a time when systematical racial prejudice and segregation was endemic in American society. How could he make this happen? He needed to study the law and organize mass nonviolent protests until the government decided to listen. Now along his journey, he was presented with an opportunity to deliver that powerful and audacious I have a dream speech. 50 Cent he purchased a small vitamin water company and consequently sold it on for $100 million. How did this happen? Well, he had set himself the wave of becoming a platinum recording artist. Nothing to do with water. He recorded the excellent semi-biographical album, Get Rich or Die Trying. And as a result of this, he was able to position himself to receive these kind of deals. Sir Alan Sugar. He is probably well known for his role as a ruthless boss on BBC One's The Apprentice. He grew up in a council estate in Hackney. His wave was to become a successful business mogul, nothing to do with TV or entertainment. As a result of this, his characteristics caught the attention of producers at BBC One, and now we are a blessed <laughs> with an entertaining show every year. Now obviously 50 Cent or even Alan Sugar for that matter are nowhere near the grand stature of the late great Martin Luther King whose vision was to create a fairer world as opposed to just becoming incredibly rich. For the sake of this point we are not really focusing on their moral position but to highlight that these people and your own role models would not have been able to achieve what they did had it not been for their ability to set themselves audacious goals to visualise, plan, write down and then work towards their own wave. Okay, it's time for action. Are you ready? This is where it starts to get really real. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, let's complete the first draft of your action planner. Step one, go for the big wave. That's correct. It's time to set your own wave. I'm talking about an audacious goal that will make you feel fear, excitement in disguise, I'm not talking about a pseudo goal that you are unlikely to achieve, such as earning 50 million pounds for playing computer games all day or opening an internet coffee shop on the moon. Rather, I'm talking about a goal you know that deep down might be difficult, but not impossible to achieve. In fact, it's possible. Write down, my wave is to fill in the blank. and I know it's possible. In order to complete this simple sentence, you will need to tap into the creative side of your mind and access your imagination. Now at this point, you may feel slightly odd, uncomfortable, or even silly, dare I say, to just pull a vision out of thin air, especially when you're not in the habit of doing this. But I promise you, as you become a master wave surfer, this process will become easier and easier. Just ponder on this for a second. 
that everything around you at the moment, the light, the chair, the plate, the clock, the buildings, the clothes you have on, etc., were once a distant thought within someone else's imagination. Yes, someone imagined the traffic light and brought it to life. They imagined the Eiffel Tower and brought it to life. Steve Jobs imagined the iPad and brought it to life. What separates you from these people? Nothing. You too have a brain capable of imagining things beyond your wildest dreams. Task 6.1. So I need you to visualize at least three possible outcomes for your wave and then select the vision which you enjoy the most. Don't try to rush this. Find yourself a place where you feel comfortable and work on it. Somewhere you know you'll be able to find some peace, quiet and serenity and are not distracted by distractions. I know we already covered this earlier in the book, but it's really important so just in case, here are some suggestions for completing this activity. Play some calm and music in a place with nobody around. Put your feet up, close your eyes and dream big. Run a relaxing bath, light some candles, close your eyes and dream big. Go to a place buzzing with your kind of people or energy. Get inspired and dream big. Go on a trip, journey, somewhere different from your surroundings. Get inspired and dream big. Now, this is not to be confused with chapter two, choosing your surfboard. The surfboard is the thing which you enjoy. The wave is going to be what you are going to do with that thing. <laughs> For example, your thing may be becoming a freelance osteopath. Your wave may be to get a space at a local gym or health establishment where you will come across regular potential clients. Or your thing may be offering financial advice. What you might do is source or create a space that you can use for your sessions. Maybe your thing is making music. Your wave may be to perform gigs at major festivals around Europe. Get it? Whatever your wave is, it should give you the jitters when you imagine yourself surfing this wave. This is the big wave. These waves make you smile. The journey towards them removes you from your comfort zone and will make you a stronger, wiser and more experienced person. They give your life purpose and direction and they make the journey, though sometimes rough, an absolute pleasure. And don't forget all those you will inspire along your own journey to be great. And here's a hint. Do not rush this process. Have a really good think before you write. Now write it down in the space provided on your action planner. Try not to limit yourself. Take as much time as you need for your wave to be realised. It needs to be organic and something that you really believe in. Warning! The moment you see your wave, you will most likely hear that inner voice giving you 101 reasons as to why this will never work. You're too young. You're too old. You're too fat, you're too thin, you haven't got this, you haven't got that, and so on. Go ahead now and write down a few reasons exactly why your wave will not work. Do not proceed any further until you finish this step. These reasons are bullshit. Simple, just as a master surfer will move their body and demonstrate excellent core strength in order to counteract the movement of the wave and remain in control on top of the surfboard, I need you to counteract these thoughts. At first, you may be overpowered by the sheer strength of the wave and fall in the sea, but eventually, as your core starts to get stronger, you will find that you are able to stay on your surfboard for a whole lot longer despite the vigorous movements of the wave beneath you. Now return back to the task above. Look at all the bullshit reasons you have stated. Now complete the following task. List all the reasons why your wave will work. Do not cop out of this. Contact your surfing buddies if need be. Now go back to task 6.2 and wrap out all of your bullshit reasons. They serve you no purpose whatsoever. It's worth mentioning that your wave is not set in stone. Your planner is a working document, which means that as time goes on, 
you will alter, change and amend it in order to suit your current direction. The beauty of being a captain of your soul is that you can give yourself the permission to change course at any time within reason. I have set myself waves and along the way I have naturally become more knowledgeable, skillful and acquired more connections which inevitably opened up new doors for me. This has changed my perspective and altered my wave. For example, my wave was to leave my 9 to 5 and set up mad workshops as a fully self-sufficient social enterprise which earns enough money to account for my expenses. Along the way, I naturally inspired many people who asked me so many questions about exactly how I did it, what steps I took and how I turned my passion into an income. The extra time, knowledge, experience and money I had acquired have presented me with the opportunity to write a book become an author, which in turn will help so many others tap into their inner potential and also generate an income. So my point is that new opportunities will arise based on the person you become and the people you meet along the way. Should you ignore these opportunities because of what you've written down on your action planner? Of course not. I'm sure Alan Sugar didn't write down on any action planner his aim of becoming the lead character in a popular TV show, The Apprentice. As long as you are surfing the wave, go for it. Think of the action plan as a work in progress. Its purpose is to direct your focus so that you may pick up the blessings along the journey towards that point. The action planner also gets you into the habit of writing shit down. Because when you don't, that's usually where it remains. A small, unlit candle deep inside you, unable to illuminate the world. Let it out, light the candle and set yourself free. If you are slightly unsure of what your wave might be, then rest assured that most people don't know theirs either. I meet clients all the time who are adamant about wanting to take control of their future, be their own boss, run their own company, surf the wave, but they have no idea what their surfboard looks like, so cannot even begin to think about catching a wave. But undeterred, I work with them in an open question format until eventually they reveal their hidden surfboard. These are questions which you might have been subconsciously avoiding because the answers force you out of your comfort zone. The questions are as follows. 1. What would you do if you knew that you had absolutely no chance of failing? 2. What adventures about your life would you like to share with your grandchildren or great-grandchildren one day? Three, what would give you a huge sense of accomplishment? Four, if those doubting little voices in your head were placed on mute, what ideas now appear at the forefront of your mind? Five, what will you regret not doing if you do not do it? Six, what do you need to do with your life which will put you in a better position than you are now? Seven, if you didn't care what people thought about you, what would you do? Task 6.2 If you find that you are someone that hides from difficult questions, get your surfing instructor or one of your surfing buddies to help you by asking you these questions. It's much easier to hide or avoid answering if you do it by yourself. However, if you are questioned by someone you trust, they might be able to help you to work out why you are avoiding them and push you to confront what might be holding you back. If you haven't found your wave yet, then don't worry. It's better for you to take your time and get it right than to step into something half-heartedly. Refer back to the suggestions within task 6.1 and take your time. It's my belief that many people in this predicament deep down actually do know what they want to do but they are so scared of rejection, failure, scrutiny, sharks and so on that the thought of even bringing these from the depths of imagination even into a verbal manifestation becomes too overwhelming. So then it's easier to just say, I don't know. If this description sounds familiar, then I want you to know something. You are not alone. I want you to know that I believe in you. I want you to know that you have a very special gift that is inside of you, but only you can unwrap it. I want you to take a brave step towards your greatness and unleash your innermost desires to someone you trust. The person or people you choose to help you here will be part of your team of surfing buddies. You need to let them know how you feel and then tell them what it is you're passionate about. 
If you are unsure of how to begin the conversation, then here's a suggestion as to how it could go. Hi, I'm telling you this because I respect you and trust you. I know that my innermost thoughts and desires are safe with you and you'll support me in whatever I choose to do. Well, I know what it is and I would like to share that with you. Don't worry, I'm not asking you how to do this. I just need someone to speak to about my ideas from time to time so I can get them out of my head and into a format where they can develop and grow to the point where one day they may become a reality. Is this okay? One day, I would love to be in a position to blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure exactly what route I'm going to take to get there, but I'm certain that I would like to take the journey. So put something like this into your own words. Even if your voice shakes whilst you're saying it, do it. Send me an email now and let me know how it went. Email me here, Surf the wave at waynejordan.com. Now, are you ready to move on? Okay, let's go.